my most recent comic, I have a series called Gender Studies. This is the third of what I hope will be five or six different ones. And this one, uh, they're autobiographical stories of my adventures in gender. And this is called Child's Play. For very little kids, people pretty much fall into two categories, children and adults. It's the only difference that really matters. Adults are tall and strong, and they pretty much know everything. And they can take you out for ice cream and other cool stuff. Kids are a lot more fun to play with. And they're really good at games like make-believe and hide-and-seek. You see the kid coming up saying, is that double chocolate fudge and Rocky Road? Can I have a bite? You can't have any. It's mine. But they do things like, but they can't do things like take you out for ice cream, and they don't really like to share. Then around four years old, kids start to notice some of the other kinds of differences that seem to be important. I hadn't really given much thought to the way that, child, that kids learn to understand gender until my oldest niece, Pickle, was in preschool. Pickle, auntie, picking Pickle up from daycare. That's when, seemingly overnight, Pickle and her classmates became aware that for a lot of people, in a lot of different ways, the difference between boys and girls really matters a lot. How was preschool today? We had apples and milk for snack and we went on the swings, and I made a picture of grandma. And knowing which person is what is the most important thing of all. And Jacob wanted to play trucks, but Chloe said Jacob's a girl, so he should play dolls. But Jacob said he's a boy, like our new classroom helper, Mary Ann. When adults ask about gender, they never ask directly, and it usually feels like an insult. And so here in line at the grocery store, is the cashier a man or a woman or what? He, she, or it? And then I'm thinking, I'm wearing a tie. If I speak up, will they turn on me? Am I a jerk for worrying about myself? But when my niece and her friends asked, it felt less like judgment and more like a fact-finding mission. Auntie, are you sure you're a girl? Yep, I'm pretty sure. Then why do you have short hair? And why do you dress like a boy? And why do you act like a boy? Can I change my answer to your first question? <laughs> like all good investigators, Pickle and her classmates sometimes drew on previously gathered intelligence. So there's me, shopper who looks a lot like her dad, and then three-year-old who met my dad at preschool visiting day. They sometimes reach some interesting conclusions. Are you Pickle's grandpa? <laughs> this actually happened. <laughs> and sometimes they call in expert witnesses, like my fabulous partner. Sandy, is Auntie really a girl? Well, Pickle, what do you think? Auntie has short hair like a boy. Well, Pickle, I have short hair too. Do you think I'm a boy? Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> Pickle's a lot older now, but talking to all those preschoolers about boys and girls and who is whom made clear to me that when it comes to talking about gender, adults could learn a lot from little kids. I'm waiting for Pickle at swim class. You look a lot like my cousin. She's a boy, too. <laughs> Dropping pickle at ballet. Are ladies supposed to wear sweaters like that? Or taking pickle to the park? You're the shortest man I have ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> For one thing, kids seem to instinctively understand that sexes and genders don't always align. We'll have a small chicken burrito, two carnitas tacos, and a chocolate milk. Will that be for here or to go? Auntie, the lady at the counter is a boy but I don't think she knows it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure she knows it. <laughs> also, it's nice to know that for at least a brief time, little kids really do understand that genders and bodies can combine in an infinite number of ways. I'm feeling philosophical now. <laughs> and they do the only thing that really makes sense in the face of such breadth of possibility. If kids really can't tell if you're a boy or a girl or another gender entirely, Hi, Pickles, Auntie. Can Pickle come out and play? She's just finishing her lunch. That's Pickle's best friend, Spud. I changed the names. <laughs> They're usually not afraid to ask. You know what? I have an Auntie, too. My Auntie's a girl. Are you a girl? Yes, I am, Sprout. Sort of. Oh, right. Sometimes I forget. That's OK, Sprout. Sometimes I forget, too. <laughs> Thanks.
great. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, this is more zine than comic, and it's um, a tribute to African American gay men with beards. The Little Book of Big Black Bears. Errol wears a frohawk. Roddy has a poet's soul. Derek gets his eyebrows done. Lamar is on the dole. Philip looks like Santa Claus. Terrell is Philip's elf. Malcolm likes to keep his cool. Khalil keeps to himself. Bill is at the white party. Big Mike is at the gym. Bubba's into vintage plaids. And Basil's into him. <laughs> Nathan wears a hoodie. Daryl likes to wear suspenders. I'll tell you something about this when I'm done. <laughs> Tim likes wearing nothing. Dre's a Folsom Street bartender. It's very hard to rhyme suspenders. Um, <laughs> that's my third try, by the way. <laughs> Three different versions out there. And then the rest of the zine is, um, if you're familiar with the poem, The Teddy Bear's Picnic, I rewrote it to be The Black Teddy Bear's Picnic. <laughs> At the edge of the wood, you can hear them so merry, so raucous, so gleeful, so joyous, so hairy. It's the day when black teddy bears gather together to picnic and frolic from dawn till whenever. Some teddies are chubby and pudgy and cuddly. Other teddies are muscular, strapping and studly. There are teddies of chocolate and caramel hue, bears of mocha and tan and mahogany too. There are laughing and frolicking teddies at play, dancing dances of love, singing music, so gay. So if you were enchanted by bears large and small and the beauty and grace of black bears above all, then come down to the wood for their annual rite. Join the bears as they frolic late into the night. Thanks. The Little Book of Big Black Bears. <laughs> See you at Zinefest. Thank you.